And hello everyone, this is Ye Jing Wang from City University of Hong Kong. Thanks for attending this talk about automating future selection for deep command assistance. This is a joint work with Yang Yuzhao, Tongxu, and Xian Wu. <coughs> Here is a table of contents of my talk. I will first introduce the motivation of this talk, then I will detail the framework and present three selective experiments. Recently, deep recommend systems have attracted a lot of attention from both the industry and the research communities. With strong future representation and the inference capacities, it could accurately capture user preference. However, existing works spend a lot of efforts on enhancing the inference ability while neglecting future selection process. They just feed all possible future fields to recommendation models or manually select some informative ones by human experts. The former leads to actual inference time and even worse performance, while the latter requires plenty of expert knowledge and labor effort. Existing future selection methods could be divided into three categories, the filter, the wrapper, and the embedded method. Filters select future fields regardless of the recommendation model. They are based only on data general future, like correlation, Wrapper methods incorporate a black box to evaluate the quality of selected future subsets. When the number of fields is large, the computation time is significant. Embedded methods perform future selection and the recommendation simultaneously. It combines the advantage of both previous methods. However, it is sensitive to strong structure assumptions. For these reasons, we aim to design an efficient future selection framework for deep recommend assistance. However, this task is challenging since the huge search space. Suppose there are n future fields, the then the total number of possible future subsets is the nth power of two. For example, there are six future fields in the field, and there are two choices for each field, namely selected or dropped. Then the size of the space is six power of two. To address this issue, we propose the auto field. Here is the framework and an overview of auto field. It consists of two stages, the search stage and the retraining stage. We first get the embedding of all future fields and initialize the controller. Then we feed these embeddings to the selection module. This module provides future selection results according to the controller parameters. In the search stage, we update the controller and the deep recommendation model parameters. In the retraining stage, we select the optimal future subset and uh, retrain a deep recommendation model. I will first introduce the structure of recommendation model for the search stage. This is the architecture of the deep recommendation model used in the search stage. We use a simple M layers multi layer perception for re recommendation. With building embeddings include this recommendation model makes the prediction by n times linear transformation together with nonlinear activation. We set all activation function as the ReLU before the output. The following part is the controller. And as visualized in field A, we use n parallel nodes to represent n included future fields respectively. Each node is a two dimensional vector. For field i, alpha zero i is the probability of dropping this field while alpha one i is the probability of selecting this field. With this design, we only use two n parameters represent the whole search space. We only update the controller parameters in the search, search, search state. In this state, the alpha one of predictive future fields would increase, while the alpha zero of non-predictive future fields would increase. As visualized, we use the red line to represent larger values in field B. In this example, field 1 and field 3 are inform informative future fields, and field 2 is a redundant future. Now I am going to introduce the future selection mode. I first define the soft selection and the hard selection. As visualized, soft selection would not reduce the number of futures. It only attributes weight to field embeddings while the hard selection directly drops non-predictive future fields. We want the weights to be dif dif differentiable and close to 0 or 1, since the, a moderate value would result in the gap between the search and the, re the retraining. The Gumball software maximizes these two requirements. 
So we utilize it to generate weights for the sort of the selection in the search, search state. And this is the optimization algorithm of the auto field. There are two sets of parameters to be optimized. Deep recommendation model parameters W and the controller parameters A. Following the dots, we formulate a bi-level optimization problem. Alternatively, update W and A. Let's you say we update W on the, on the training set Y fix A and update A on validation set with W fix. This optimization strategy could avoid overfitting problem. The loss function we use is a binary cross entropy loss. After optimize the controller, we need to retrain a deep recommendation model for final prediction. Retraining state is necessary since suboptimal future fields still influence the model performance in the search state. To eliminate the search influence, we first select the k-future fields with highest score. Scores are computed according to the well-trained controller parameters, and k is a predefined hyperparameter. Then we need to adapt the, adapt the model structure. For example, in the search state, we keep the embedding layers for non-predictive future fields. Now we need to drop this, field, uh, drop this embedding layers. Plus, deep recommendation model structure could be different. Besides using the same multi-layer perceptual structure as the search state, we could also utilize any other state of our deep model structures like DPFM or product neural network. For optimization in the retraining state, we only need to optimize the re recommendation model. We could directly apply gradient descent. Next, I'm going to show some experimental results. I first in introduce the experimental setting. We mainly conduct the experiments on two benchmark data sets, average and critical. The evaluation metrics are AUC score and log loss. We conduct five experiments as listed, and I will introduce three experiments in red. The first thing is the overall performance test. We compare the auto field with five baselines and using all future fields without any selection. For a fair comparison, baselines drop the same number of fields as auto field, or a little fewer. The results show auto field achieves the best performance. Principal component analysis is, is a variable reduction method. Here we use it as a filter method for future selection. It is not effective since it neglects the dependencies between the ground truth and the and the future field. And there, there are three embedded methods: lasso, gradient boosting regression, gradient boosted decision tree. Lasso fails to achieve a good performance due to its strong structural assumption, and gradient boosting decision tree produces an unreliable future selection result on average. The reason is that it embedded a classifier with poor performance. We also apply another automated machine learning based framework, IDAT. It could not return a stable future selection result. This is because it incorporates all future fields in a single search space and applies soft maps. It could be significantly disturbed by the stochastic training process and stuck at the local optima. Auto field could enhance the model performance, and it is noteworthy that it drops the half of the future field on average. This results reveal the effectiveness of our framework. The second experiment is transferability test. We test the transferability of auto field on average data set with six different state of art models equipped in the retaining state. Here is the result. The first line of each block is the result using all future fields. And the second line is the result using future fields selected by auto field. It reveals that our auto field could enhance the recommendation performance and reduce the inference time. The, pro the performance improvement is significant on first three models, while auto field helps to save more inference time on the last three models. At the last, I want to share our case study. We conduct this experiment on movie lens one million. There are eight feature, uh, 
there are eight future fields in total. We enumerate all possible future field subsets and test the corresponding performance. The result is shown in the fig. The x axis stands for the number of future fields in the subset, represented as k, from 4 to 7. The y axis is the AUC score they achieved. Blue points are enumerated subsets, and orange points are future fields subsets selected by auto field. We could find that for every k, auto field could achieve top performance. This further prove the effectiveness of auto field. In conclusion, in this paper, we propose the auto field with an, 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 an automated machine learning based framework, which could select out the optimal future fields for deep recommender systems. The selection result could be transferred to any deep recommendation models to accelerate the model inference and improve the model performance. For more details of the model, please, re uh, please refer to our paper. Also, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask me now or drop me an email anytime. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much, Yuqing, for the amazing presentation. We do have time for questions. If in case somebody has one, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. In the meantime, to while you guys are thinking about uh, a potential question, I can kick start. Uh, you, you covered about transferability across models. I'm interested in understanding like what's what's your take on transfer transferability within model changes. So maybe if I pick up any of these models and I try uh, my I try different hyperparameters, I try some minor architectural changes. Then do you think that any change in the model would need me to go back and like change the feature selection, or do you think that it's going to be slightly robust to some of these minor changes? Any comments on that would be useful. I think our model could select a general future and future field selection results for and um, for the recommender systems. So I think minor and um, modify like a, a hyperparameter and okay. and does not require another retraining and from the search stage. That's my opinion. Right. Perfect. And a related question. I think like uh, do you do you think like this something like this could work for feature groups? Or will it make it better? Like if I have to switch off or sub select or deselect a group of features together, so oftentimes, right? I mean, we do have for certain problems, some of these features are not as useful. So instead of doing it on a per feature basis, do you think that there is value in doing having the controller look at feature groups instead of each of these features? Or do you think that the model automatically will look at the interaction across features and then handle that for us? I think for a, a group of features, and we might could uh, set uh, the controller. Right, a group level controller for a feature group as well. Um, let me find the. Uh... Oh, yeah. I think yeah. for a specific uh, group of future fields, we might could set um, a group in a. Uh, in a in in a in a in, in a single node, you 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 could get me. Uh -huh, right. Okay. You combine all those features and then but, they'll have. The and but, uh, but but this method might not uh, be um, useful. But I guess I we could we could apply this method to sort a group of feature field selection. 